Thanks to the supporters of channel member DC Maximo. Well, we have an even smaller budget than last year, which in turn was a smaller budget than the year before. And somehow we've got to try and put together a promotion chasing team once again. And we're almost certainly going to have to do it without Tom Best and everyone else whose contract is up this summer. It's going to be fine. Transfer window. Hello and welcome to part 72 of Wembley to Wembley. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, it is our season review and transfer special. And uh, if we come out of this episode with a first team squad, I'll be absolutely delighted. We could really use a takeover this summer. So our signing of the season, as you can imagine, Niall Ennis, almost certainly going to lose him um, because we're not going to be able to afford to renew his contract. But 52 appearances at 33 years old is impressive in itself. But to do it whilst getting 21 goals, 11 assists and a 7.12 average rating is the only one of the new signings who averaged in the green. Even Jacob, who I thought was great. Averaged below that, McLennan got 25 goals, seven assists, and uh, only a 6.95. The fact that both of them played 52, started 52 matches each, shows just how much we, hit, we relied on Niall Ennis and Callum McLennan last season and might go some way to explaining why they both stopped scoring at the end of the season. They were shattered. Uh, Phelan obviously came in on loan as well. Only started 29 games, but made another 22 substitute appearances. 21 goal contributions for him. And outside of that, nothing particularly exciting or extravagant. We were supposed to have attempt to avoid relegation and we were this close twice to promotion. We nearly got there through the league. We nearly, nearly got there through the playoffs. I don't want to talk about the heartbreak that happened yesterday. Um, and as you can see, Maidstone as you would expect after being top of the league for so long, did end up winning the playoffs. And uh, we just have to be sad knowing just how close we were. And it might have been our best opportunity for years because it's almost certainly going to be a weaker team going into next season than the one that we've just had, unless we have a truly spectacular summer. Money-wise, we did increase a little bit on the previous year because we had that little bit of a cup run. Um, but obviously... We didn't play anyone big, so it didn't make a huge difference. We're still over half a million pounds in debt. And this is our team of the year. Ennis and Best, the only two who average over a seven. And everyone apart from Scowan is out of contract or at the end of their loans. So don't get too familiar with any of those guys. They're all on their way out. Ennis won player of the year. McLennan, young player of the year, even though he's 24. I think he turned 25, actually. No, he is still 24. Um, Ennis signing of the season, as we know. McLennan, top scorer. Ennis, most assists and most man of the matches and highest average rating. Jacob set a new club record for clean sheets in a season. Tom Best extended his own record as all-time top league goal scorer with 96 league goals, over 100 goal goals. And Ennis is our oldest ever goal scorer. And if he does stick around, that's a record he's likely to break again next year but I don't think he's likely to stick around. So this is our all-time best 11. So Jacob, after one year, goes straight into it, which shows just how poor our goalkeepers have traditionally been. If there's any way for us to keep hold of Jacob, that'd be super. I don't know that there is. Chadder at left back has now retired. Larson, after several years on loan, he was on loan, then he signed permanently, then we sold him and loaned him back. So three years he's been at the club, um, but he is now on his way back to Switzerland, Sweden. Sweden and Switzerland are different places. He's on his way back to Sweden. And that's the end of Larsen. Um, Leo Young is his strike partner in the all-time best 11 and would be considered a terrific signing. I agree. Would love to bring Leo Young back. I mean, it might be something that's worth trying to do. He was with us for three years and was always great, especially as a goal threat. Hasn't played a huge amount for real Bedford um, down, in the, uh, down in the regional leagues. So if we can bring him back, he might be a cheap option. I mean... We can't offer him a contract just yet. I'd love to have him and his spectacles back at the club. Josh Gray, of course, retired. Uh, Les Giles is now playing for North Lee uh, down in the regional league. Scowan, of course, is still with us as a utility man. Interestingly, he's in this team as a central midfielder, the one position he very rarely plays for me, alongside Sean Martin, who's still playing for Wellingborough Whitworth. And of course, Tom Best, because Best is best. And then up front is Butterfill, who is now retired, alongside Canerva who is now retired. Um, if we have a look at 
see why are we paying out bonuses if we have a look at the finances they're a disaster um our wage budget is lower than it has been before i'm experimenting with something different with the scouting budget based on a recommendation from you lot apparently because i don't have a scouting package that means the scouting costs more when we do it so i've i've picked a scouting package it will use our entire scouting budget it'll be interesting to see if we still go into a negative scouting budget again this season we can't not scout at all because we need to be able to sign players we don't have any kind of youth setup we we need some way to bring footballers into this club um so we've got to do some scouting and we've given a budget for it so we may as well spend it we're not moving any of that into transfer budget or into wage budget we are behaving ourselves with that but it does mean we have got an absolutely micro budget and are in desperate need of new owners although our current owners happy to stay at the club at least someone's happy in this scenario, I guess. So, as far as the playing squad goes, everyone apart from Scowan is out of contract or coming to the end of their loan. We, as mentioned, have no youth setup, no reserves. So, come 1st of July, we will have one player, and that player is Blaine Scowan. And we're going to have to build the rest of the team around him, bearing in mind he's already taken, uh, what, a 13th of our budget? as a utility guy. So if everyone costs as much as Blaine Scowan, we'll have a first team squad of 13 permanent players and then a few loans added in as well. Which is very similar to what we did last year, but it does mean we won't be able to give anybody best Hamilton, Yates, Bamba money. Unless we can find some more players who can accept Hughes and Brown money, which might be an important thing to do. It's going to be an interesting summer. Let's see what happens, shall we? Well, folks, it is a sad day and it has finally arrived. Tom Best is no longer a Wembley player. We just couldn't afford him. I'm glad he went out on a high. It, I mean, he wasn't back to his best, best, best. You could argue that based on that average rating drop, it became clear that he wasn't actually good enough for the level we were playing at. And I imagine he'll drop back down into the regional leagues and tear them up forever now. But um, it doesn't feel right that he's gone. He did make it onto the icons list. There's me, there's Ian Bates, and there's Tom Best on the icons list. Favoured personnel, we've got Sam Camper, who, um, of course, was scoring. Got Remember when we had Camper and Best together? Oh, those were the days. And Niall Ennis, who has signed a new contract on a pay cut. Um, but in addition to best leaving, we've also lost backup keeper George Hobbs. Uh, Machiavelli, Yates and McLaren were all too expensive to renew. Um, Seku Bamba has gone to play for Go Ahead Eagles in the Netherlands, which seems insane. Um, but they're offering him more money than we could ever afford to, £275 a week. So he goes with our blessing. And uh, we were able to bring in one more non-contract player just to be a, a making up the numbers utility kind of guy, Jordan Gatter, um, who's costing us £20 every time he plays. And he will rarely play that he's here as a man to be around the squad um, what that means is this is the squad. We have got some renewed contracts. So McLennan took a pay cut. All of these guys took pay cuts to stay. McLennan, Scowan, Hamilton, Ennis, Jacob, and Hughes. Plus we've got Gatter, who we've just brought in, and Patel, who is um, obviously still uh, still here on a non-contract as well. Marrow and Larson go back today. I don't know why they, they don't go back first thing in the morning. Later on today, they'll go back to their parent clubs. So that means we effectively have a first team squad of six players plus a couple of non-contract reserves and uh, lots to do. This is the team as it currently stands. We do have McLennan and Ennis together, who, of course, did get like, like 50 goals between them last year. So if Ennis can uh, keep it going for one more year, despite being 34, that would be super duper. Obviously, they did both stop scoring as the season went on. Um, Scowan who we already know renewed, can play anywhere. Hamilton will probably be starting in midfield now because he's going to be one of the highest paid players at the club on £100 a week. Despite uh, losing his place towards the end of last season, Hughes is still here to play centre-back. And Jacob, I think he's a very important signing. He took a big pay cut as well. He was on over £100 a week before, I think. Or was it £80 a week? Either way, big pay cut for the best goalkeeper we've ever had. is a big signing to start the summer off. Uh, Money-wise, just with those six players, we've used about half of our budget. So, 
we might end up with 12 or 13 players, a couple of non-contracts and some loans, and we'll have to call that fine. The media think we're going to get relegated. It's hard to argue trying to survive without Tom Best. But it is the 1st of July. We have to put our positive smiley faces on and go and see what we can find and hopefully bring in some stars. We've got to get promoted this year. We've got to. Well, this is going to be a tough one. First... Uh... First batch of trialists complete. We've got two boys in. Paul Miller is in as our new backup goalkeeper. So we have two goalkeepers. He's nice and cheap. He only wanted £30 a week. That's my kind of boy. Um, and then we've got uh, a guy called Joe Lowe, who's six foot five, which even if he wasn't good, would be perfect. Joe, not so low. Um, he's a 31-year-old centre-back. Four stars of current ability. He's everything I've ever wanted. Look at this. He's got all this experience at our level and higher. He's got a great name. He's a big boy. He's going to be an aerial threat from corners. £120 a week is the absolute max of our pay scale. But he's obviously going to be nailed on start centre-back. So on that basis, don't mind bringing him in, even though he's 31. But that is it from the first batch of trialists. Everyone else, we just priced ourselves out of. There's a few others that we're still trying to bring in. Have I just lost transfer? Oh, God, where do transfers normally live? There. They're going to be in the wrong place forever now. There's a few more we're trying to bring in. I'm not that hopeful. Um, but we're going to get another batch of trialists because at the moment the squad is looking quite small. So next batch of trialists. Got us a few more boys. Josh Scott is a 30-year-old left-sided player. Um, we can play him anywhere at the left-hand side. Probably going to play on the left-hand side of midfield. I know, he's not very good, but he was cheap. Um, he's in on a non-contract, only wants £55 per match. This is the kind of player we've got to put up with now. Uh, Peter Hogan is a midfield player, 24 years old. Little bit better, also a lot more expensive. Three stars of current ability, lots of potential, but potential means nothing in this world. Can play central midfield or is a central midfielder who can also play out wide. Has played the last few years for Hayes and Yedding, um, presumably both at the same time. So lots of football for him um, down in the regional leagues previously of Wimbledon. Um, and then Neil Young is another midfielder and he is. He's 19 years old, three and a half stars of current ability, central midfielder who can play on the left, also on the right wing as well. Um, he He's, uh, he's better than the other guy, apparently, formerly of Doncaster and Barnet, was on loan at Hearn Bay in our league last year and did quite well. All of which means the squad is slowly taking shape and we're slowly using up all of our money. But we've got a couple of goalkeepers, obviously Jacob as a starter and Miller as the backup. We don't really have a left back at the moment. We've got Josh Scott who can play there. Gatter, who can play there. Hughes, who can play there. But no one who actually will play there. Um, Centre-backs, we've got Lowe and Hughes, which should be fine. Um, and then at right-back, again, we don't really have anybody. It's probably going to be Scowan as it stands at the moment, which worked so well at the end of last season. Left wing could be Scowan if he's not at right-back. Uh, more likely going to be Scott. Young could play out there at a push as well. In central midfield, we've got Young, Scowan, Hamilton, Hogan. It's the one area that's relatively well-stocked. Although... As playmakers go, there's only really Hogan who can do it, which is not ideal. Oh, Hamilton as well, I guess. And then we haven't replaced Tom Best yet. There is nobody to play on the right wing currently. And up front, it's going to be Ennis and McLennan and Jordan Patel is still here too. We could do with another striker as well, but I mean, money-wise, it's not ideal. Wouldn't this guy be handy? He went to Cheltenham though. Another round of trialists, please. Well, we've squeezed in a couple more and just about used up all our money now. So Kelvin Hayball is a 19-year-old right back who is definitely my kind of right back, a very attacking right back, three stars of current ability. He has got a little bit of Cambridge stench on him, but to balance that, played 13 times in League Two last year at 19, well, at 18 years old, which has got to be a got to be a positive for him. Hopefully, someone with a bright future and a great name, Kelvin Hayball. Um, we've also got Andrew McDonnell, who's a 19-year-old right winger. Um, I mean, there's going to be a lot of pressure on this boy to be the uh, Tom Best replacement. I don't think he's stepping into Tom Best's shoes. Let's just remember he's a different kind of player. He's not even a particularly attacking wide player, but we've had to make do with what we could find. Um, he, uh, interestingly, Chesterfield under-20s seemed to play in the Northern Premier League. He didn't. He He didn't. 
But he's here now. Hopefully he'll end up great. And then Noah Tobin is another utility man. He's six foot four and officially a natural left back, but he's also an accomplished centre back and an accomplished left winger. I don't know about you, boys and girls. I love a centre back who can play on the left wing who's six foot four. So he's going to be an interesting one. He's only got four for heading as well, which is great for a centre-back. Although at six foot four, does it really matter? The ball will just get tangled in his hair and then he can walk it over the line. That's the plan. So we've actually ended up potentially with more players actually contracted to us than we expected or had last year. A lot of them are on non-contracts, as you can see, and a lot of them are a bit rubbish. But 16 players actually under contract. That's before we've done loans. Don't worry, I've not forgotten about loans. There's one we're trying to get in now. Alfred Devine is a centre-back at Barnet, who we're going to have to pay £30 a week to, and that will officially polish off our budget. And then we've got a month before the window closes to try and bring in five more. I'm going to try and be a little bit more selective on the loans this year, not just take the first six free ones we can find. I actually want six loans that should all be in the first team. That's the plan. So if we don't find them straight away, then so be it. It's not the end of the world if we save some for January. Um, but this is what the squad is looking like. Jacob, we know he's good and we've got a decent backup for him. At left back, there's lots of players who can play there. Nobody's really natural there, which is probably a problem. Um, but it's likely to be Tobin or Scott, I guess, who are starting at left back. It's an area where if we could find a good loan, I wouldn't be too upset about it. At centre back, we've got Lowe and Hughes and then Tobin can play there. Gatta is a player. Um, we've obviously got that lad from uh, from Barnet who we're trying to bring in, who if we can partner him with Lowe, that's a lot of big height physicality at centre-back, which then also frees Hughes up to cover the two full-back positions as well, which might be his long-term position at five foot ten anyway. And then at right-back, we've got Hayball, who's in, um, but is more of a winger than a, than a right-back. Scowan is more of a midfielder than a right-back. Jordan Gatter exists, and Hughes might well end up playing there once we get some more cover in at centre back. On the left hand side of midfield Scowan is likely to start there as he has the last several seasons. Who knows where we'll be playing by the end of the season um, but Scott and Tobin and Young, they can all play there We've got lots of players who can sort of do a job at a lot of positions. We are well stocked in central midfield, though, with Hogan, Hamilton, McDonnell and Young, although McDonnell's probably going to be on the right-hand side. Scowan, we're not even considering as a midfielder um, and uh, Young might end up playing out wide. Who knows? Because on the right, Hayball's our best right winger, but he's also our only right back. Um, McDonnell is, I mean, he's really a central midfielder who can play out as a wide midfielder. He's a David Beckham sort. Very different from Tom Best. How's his set piece delivery? Um, the set, free kick, free kick taking of two. All right. Um, super. Um, Ennis has been training to play there as well. At 34, we might just stick him to be a defensive winger. What's the worst that could happen? Other than the fact, obviously, he needs to play up front because we've only got Ennis, McLennan and Patel as potential strikers. So that's one less than last year because, of course, we had Tom Best last year. So Jordan Patel is going to have to step up and not be rubbish this year, which he didn't really do last year. So that's going to be interesting. So at the moment, our best 11, according to the game, looks like that. It's not disastrous. I mean, there's things that will change here. We'll probably make him a wide midfielder on support and then have him as the guy who comes and bombs past him because he's more of a winger anyway. And then he can play as a fullback because he's basically a centre-back. I mean, I'm tempted to play him as an inverted fullback, but that might be a bit too fancy for this level, but have him coming across and working with Hughes and Lowe to really allow Hayball to push on. There's even an argument that this is screaming for a 3-5-2 or a 5-3-2. I mean, we could even, if we just pop it in, just for a minute, I'm not. I'm probably not going to do it, but with the this combination of players, and that's not how it would look. It would look something like this, but even without changing the personnel, um, you could have... Oh, God, it's really messed them up, hasn't it? Hayball there, and then Ennis obviously is going to be up front. Tobin on the left there. Scott is the left wing back. He'd be there. He'd be there. And then McLennan's the strike. What is going on? Hughes in the middle of those. 
So you could do something like that, have him playing as a wide centre back. And then he'd be the more attacking of them. This might even we I'm kind of just pushing buttons, but as I'm pushing them, it's starting to look more and more like a system that might suit the players that we've got. Are we going to do a back three? Because that might be the sit. That probably works better than this. Oh, God. Hang on. Oh, God. I think we might be doing this. I'm so ashamed of myself. But needs must, and it suits the squad. Oh, it's horrible. If you've enjoyed that, it's genuinely horrible. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. And thank you very much for watching. We're going to do a back five. I am so, I am unclean. Ugh.